إن لله عبادا فطنا طلقوا الدنيا وخافوا الفتنا نظروا فيها فلما علموا أنها ليست لحي وطنا جعلوها لجة واتخذوا صالح الأعمال فيها سفنا إن لله عبادا فطنا طلقوا الدنيا وخافوا الفتنا نظروا فيها فلما علموا أنها ليست لحي وطنا جعلوها لجة واتخذوا صالح الأعمال فيها سفنا إن لله عبادا فطنا طلقوا الدنيا وخافوا الفتنا نظروا فيها فلما علموا أنها ليست لحي وطنا جعلوها لجة واتخذوا صالح الأعمال بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما انفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا كريم By the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal we come together today uh, in this blessed place uh, with these blessed faces and these blessed children to speak about something of great importance paramount value I first of all would like to thank all of you for inviting me to this particular center to give the speech here in UAE. And then, to delve right into the topic, the topic is, as I said, of paramount value and great importance. And that being the topic of the value of time. The value of time. Every single one of us has had a taste of time. Every single one of us has had a portion of time. And as Hassan al-Basri, al-Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, likes to say, Ya bin Adam, O child of Adam, innama anta ayyamun, idha dhahaba yawmuka dhahaba ba'duk. And every single one of us is a piece of time. We've had a portion of time, a taste of time, and we are time. As in we are portions of time. And that's why al-Hassan al-Basri said, that you are no more than a collection of time. And when one of those days of yours goes, O child of Adam, a portion of you has left. And that's why some of the ulama, they said, that there is nothing in the world that can be replaced. Uh, there's, no, no, there's several things in the world that can be replaced, and one that can't is time. When it goes, it's gone. And it never comes back. You can never search it. You can never search for it. You can never pay for it. Time, when it goes, it doesn't turn back. And Allah Azza wa in the Quran, He shows great value to the concept of time. Immense importance to this concept of time. Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, time in and time out, swearing by time in one shape, and another shape and another form. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْعَصْرِ By time. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that by time, and whenever Allah azza wa jal swears by something, and takes an oath by something, know that that thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by is of great importance in the sight of Allah. That's why if you look, Allah azza wa jal has never sworn by the life of anyone and the uh, age of uh, the life of anyone except the life of our dear Prophet alayhi salatu As some of the sahaba mentioned, by Allah, I don't know of anyone's life that Allah azza wa jal has sworn by except the life of our dear Prophet sallallahu when he says la'amruk. So, the, whenever Allah Azza wa Jal is found swearing by a concept, a particular object, you sh we see through that that it has great importance in the sight of Allah. And then he, after he's sworn by this, he gives you a fact. Over here he says, Wal Asr, by time. Then he says, Inna al insana lafi Verily, mankind is in a loss. They are in a loss when it comes to the time and how they use it. 
Allah's Prophet ﷺ said, نِعْمَتَانِ مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ There are two blessings from Allah Azza wa Jal, most of mankind are found at loss in. الصِّحَّةُ وَالْفَرَاغُ Good health and also free time. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He's saying the same thing as the Prophet ﷺ, that a person <coughs> is at loss when it comes to the concept of time. And why is that? That is because we do not realize the importance of this time. And by Allah it is often important. And Allah Azza wa Jal soars by the night. Wallayl. And not once, not twice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does it a number of times. Such as when He says, Wallayl idha yagshah. Wallnahari idha tajalla. By the night as it conceals. And by the day as it appears in glory. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by the night that we sleep through and the morning that we dedicate to work. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse where He says, وَاللَّيْلِ إِذْ أَدْبَرْ وَالصُّبْحِ إِذَا أَسْفَرْ And the night when it withdraws, as it leaves, وَالصُّبْحِ إِذَا أَسْفَرْ And the day and the dawn when it becomes brightened, when it brightens. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not again, I have skipped out a number of verses through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the time in one shape, in, in a shape, form of another or another, and shows you through that the importance of this concept of time. But this is enough for a person of intellect to realize that the time is indeed of great value in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. Wal Asr. Here is another, uh, as we just said a little bit earlier. And Allah's Prophet ﷺ, the same thing in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, time in and time out, is he telling you that time, O child of Adam, is of great importance. But though it is of great importance at times, we sit together between each one another and we discuss how we can waste this time. Because we don't have anything to do with the time. How can you not have something to do with the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that do you, do you believe إِنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا Do you believe that we've not created you except in vain? Without a reason? Without a purpose? That's not possible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقِّ Allah, the true Lord, and the true owner, and the true king. Allah azza wa jal is exalted from creating an individual and creating this entire creation for no reason. He doesn't work like human beings. If Allah created and Allah spent that time in developing this creation, though He could have done it in one moment, it is all to show you the importance of this time and the value of the concept of time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't created you and I, my dear brother, my dear sister, without a reason. And our dear ulama in the past, they realized that. Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullah alayhi says that it's very seldom, it's very rare that people fahimu ma'na al-wujud. That people realized the meaning and the reason and the true purpose behind existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created indeed all of us for a purpose. And Allah talks about this purpose in the Qur'an. And we all hear it all the time. But do we apply it? The purpose of this life. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We don't realize it, though we've heard of it, but those in the past, they realized it. Look for example, at the life of Ibn Aqil, Abu Wafa. Look for example, dear brother, dear sister, at the life of Abu Wafa, Ibn Aqil. Look for the example, dear brother, dear sister, at the life of our dear Prophet ﷺ himself. The Sahaba used to say that we would sit 
in one majlis of the Prophet ﷺ, just like this one right here, one gathering of the Prophet ﷺ, and we'd hear him saying, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh, 70 times, 100 times. And the Prophet ﷺ himself saying that I, and imagine a person whose sins that were before and there were none, and whose sins that are to come and he was saved from them already were forgiven. As in no sins, but even if there were to be, he would be forgiven Imagine a person like this saying, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh every single day, 70 to 100 times, and if not more. Imagine a person like this standing up to his Lord at night time, four hours a time, three hours a time in prayer, all of that because he realized the reason of creation. Take for example, as I said, the life of Ibn Aqil, Al-Hanbali. Abu Al-Wafa Ali ibn Aqil Al-Hanbali. Who used to be a sign from amongst the signs of Allah Azza wa when it came to the value of time. And knowing and understanding this value of time. Abu Al-Wafa, he used to say that even in terms of my eating, I try my best to eat something that doesn't take my time. So what he used to do was, he would take a glass of water, and he would take some cake, and dip it in this cake, in this water. And then have this cake that's so easy to swallow, so he doesn't spend his time chewing. Subhanallah al-Malik. And we can't have a dinner, a meal, except without the appetizers, you know, the main course, the side course, and the left course, and the right course, and all sorts of courses. But Ibn Aqil al-Hanbali over here, he says that I would prefer, I would prefer this cake that I would dip it in water over even bread, because when I would eat bread, it would be difficult and it would take a lot of time for me to chew. Other ulama would, as they're sitting to eat, same thing. They would have someone else feeding them so that they could use that time to read, to write. Because they understood the value of this time, and they realized the value of this time, Ibn Aqil particularly, as Imam al-Dhahabi rahmatullah mentions, Ibn Aqil particularly, he wrote the largest book that history has ever seen. Can anybody guess how large this book was? Take a wild guess. Somebody give me a figure. Huh? 10,000 pages? Huh? Yes. No, 10,000 pages is not much. The book was 800 volumes long. 800 volumes long. Most of us don't even have a library that size. And at that time, paper was so expensive. Paper was so expensive. Who is Ibn Aqil? Sorry? Who is Ibn Aqil? Ibn Aqil al-Hanbali. He was amongst the scholars in the past. <coughs> paper was very expensive. Pens were very expensive. You wonder how much it cost for him to write that book. Can anybody give me a wild guess? We spend our money on our cars, our livelihood, jewelry, keys made of silver and platinum and whatever, glasses costing us five, six thousand dirhams. Well, I usually say reals, but you know, over here I'll have to make an exception. Guess how much this book cost him? Because he had some, he, they had value for the signposts of Allah Azza wa Jal. The signposts of Allah Azza wa Jal were valuable in their eyes. And they took that from Allah saying, مَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Whoever gives greatness, whoever shows the greatness or understands the value 
of the signposts of Allah, he's doing that because he is fearful in his heart. All of that is because of the taqwa that's been placed in his heart. How much do you think this book cost him? A student of his. Does anybody want to guess before I continue? You want to guess? A student of his, Ibn Aqil, had to sell his entire house to buy this book and make it a waqf for the believers to come. And make it a trust for the people to come. Because as I said, papers weren't readily available like this. There were no printing companies that would make books such as this. The first printing press that came was either in the early 20th century or the late 19th century in Germany. So with that being said, papers were really expensive. <clears throat> Ibn al-Jawzi, how, how did they make books? Ibn al-Jawzi talking about this, and also talking about the value of time. He says, at times a person is tested by those that waste his time. We all have friends, we all have people that we don't want to meet because of the fact that they waste our time. He said, at times, people are tested with those that waste their time. Now we also are commanded to have husn al we can't tell them, buzz off. So for that reason, Ibn al-Jawzi had a very unique methodology in dealing with this type of people. Ibn al-Jawzi would take things and objects and things that he had to do that didn't require for his brain to be used at that time. And he would do all of those things when these time wasters would come and see him. And over generations, because they wasted Ibn al-Jawzi's valuable time, they're known as time wasters. But talun. They just waste Ibn al-Jawzi's time. Now Ibn al-Jawzi, he said, I was in two different dilemmas. Either I will refuse them from coming over to my house. And if I do such, it would cause social problems. People want to meet each other. It's amongst the, you know, the characteristics of man in general to socialize. Or I will let them in and they'll waste my time. So what he used to do was, he would take paper and prepare the paper. Cut the paper up in the right size. Prepare the paper as the people would come visit him. He would take the pens and the pencils that he had, and he would sharpen them as the people would come and visit him. He would take the books that he'd already written. Imagine, every time someone comes to you to visit, Ibn al Jawzi's already done writing a book. So he'd use that time to start binding the book that he's written. This is how our Salaf used to spend their time. Not the way we spend our time. How much do you think an average person, Mr. Normal, as they call him, how much do you think this average person in the world spends sleeping? How much time do you think he spends sleeping? Third. Some, huh? One third, of One third of his life. Because most people, as there was a survey done, they sleep 7.5 hours a day. How many hours do you think the Prophet ﷺ used to sleep? Huh? Three hours? Less, maybe? Three hours is if we only keep into consideration the tahajjud that he used to do and the sleep that he used to sleep. But there's other things that a person has to do as well. So the time goes really fast. After salah, somebody comes and asks you a question. This is the Prophet ﷺ, the whole ummah at that point, it's not like one shaykh in the masjid, you know, he's got a few people asking him a question. The whole ummah at that point is asking him questions. But even so, the Prophet ﷺ in a short life was able to accomplish so much that ummah and nations for generations are not able to accomplish. Because he wouldn't let his time be wasted. Even at the time when people would be sleeping, the Prophet ﷺ would be doing things for the ummah. At the time where everybody else is with, busy 
with his affairs, the Prophet ﷺ would go and give the rights of his family. The Prophet ﷺ, he would go sometimes around Dhuhr time, a little bit before, a little bit after. Though at that point, it's known that everybody's sleeping in town. Where everybody's at least at home with their families because it's too hot. Medina was a hot place. It's a hot place. It's too hot. The Prophet ﷺ uses this time, gets up and walks to the house of Fatima with another Sahabi. And he says, bring out Al-Hasan for me. I would like to see Al-Hasan. Everybody's sleeping. The Prophet ﷺ, because all day long, he's busy with what? With the affair of the Ummah. Discharging an army. Dedicating people to duties. Praying Salah at night time. Waking up in the morning. Answering the people's questions. Being the jurist from amongst them. All of these things, and then he has to go and give the rights of his family, his daughters, his children. And then he grabs Al-Hasan. And he wasn't a rigid man alayhi salatu wasalam. He was the best amongst us in khuluq. To his family, to his daughters, to his children. And grabs them, puts them close to him, smells him and kisses him. And he says, Allahumma inni uhibbu. Oh Allah, I love this child of mine. فَأَحِبَّهُ So love him as well. وَأَحِبَّ مَنْ يُحِبُّهُ And love anyone that loves them as well. عليه الصلاة والسلام That's how the Prophet ﷺ would spend his time. عامر ابن عبد قيس عامر ابن عبد قيس He was amongst the Salaf. He used to also take good care of his time. One day Amr ibn Qay, Abd Qais was walking down the street as a, as a man came to him, he said, I would like to speak you, to you for a moment. You know what Amr said to him? Does anybody know what Amr said to him? Amr said, I'm sick of shams. Hang on to the, the sun. Hold the sun in its place. As in the clock is ticking. If you have something to say, make sure it's valuable. Make sure it's not a waste of my time. Make sure it doesn't take away from my time and the value that's related to it. And the Prophet ﷺ also talked about this in the hadith, as we mentioned previously. Allah Azza wa Jal gave Time value from an, yet another angle. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, when He was talking to the kuffar, أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّلْكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرَ وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرُ Have we not given you time from your life and that amounts to a time which would lead a person, which would lead a person to remember and recall and take heed وَجَاءَكُمْ مِنْ نَذِيرٍ And along with that time that we'd given you in your life, we also sent you a warner. That would warn you from wasting your time. فَذُوقُوا And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَذُوقُوا So taste, as in the torment of hellfire. فَذُوقُوا فَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ نَصِيرٍ Those that have transgressed in this life, by wasting their time in vain. Abath. Not in the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. Not in that's per, what's pertinent to the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. One of the things that I've noticed people really waste their time, and I don't know about you guys here in Abu Dhabi, but anywhere I go, I was on the plane going to somewhere a couple of months ago. And I saw a grown man, 52, 53 years old. He had an iPad with him. This is not an iPad, by the way. It's not an iPad commercial. He had an iPad with him. And on the iPad, he was playing a game that I am dazzled at how people waste their time with this game. Does anybody know what that game is? 
Angry Birds. Everybody knows. So it's over here as well. It wasn't just on the plane in America. It was over here as well. Allahu Akbar. When I see a man that's grown with children, maybe a grandparent, playing Angry Bird, I get disgusted. What is this? It's not even about the value of your time. It's about the value of you as an individual. What is this? I mean, we used to, you know, be rebuked by our parents. Our parents would rebuke us from playing games. And now we have people that are fully grown. That may run businesses and multi-millionaires. And this person was a businessman. He had 52 people working for him. And he told me that I have a business and I do this and I do that. And then he pulled out his iPad and started playing Angry Birds. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. A waste of life, a waste of time. A waste of life and a waste of time. And the older you get, dear brother, the dear sister, the more you should recognize that your time is coming. And that every single day that passes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving Himself an excuse and excusing you from making excuses. As Allah's Prophet alayhi salatu Wasalam said, Man ammarahu Allah, whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him an age of 60 years, فَقَدْ أَعْذَرَهُ إِلَيْهِ فِي الْعُمُرِ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken away all of the excuses of this individual in terms of age. So if you go on that day and say, I didn't have time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't accept that as an excuse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not accept that as an excuse. A man 60 years old, fully grown, at that point a pr- person should be ready for death at any moment. I remember one day, and this was a personal experience of mine, <laughs> last year, I was invited to give a speech somewhere. And it just so happened that also my shaykh was giving the speech at the same place. And I was reading a book, and I picked up the book, and as the shaykh came onto the podium, I said, my dear shaykh, I have this new book I got a couple of days ago. It's a nice book, it's about such and such topic. And wallahi, the hours that we spent on the podium, the shaykh's eyes didn't look past the book. Because he realized the value of his time. When his speech time came, he got up, gave the speech, and the whole time he was up, and I think he had read about half the book during that one sitting right there. And he asked me to borrow it, and the next day, or the day after, he said, I'm done here. And it was a nice book. These people really valued their times. And that's why they got somewhere. People in the past weren't like us. They didn't have iPads. They didn't have Angry Bird. They didn't have those things. And dear brother, dear sister, no matter what your age is, no matter what your, your gender is, realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment, He will ask you about your time. As Allah's Prophet ﷺ, He says, in the hadith of Abi Barza al-Aslami, he says, لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة The feet of the slave of Allah Azza wa Jal will not move on the day of judgment. حتى يسأل عن عمره فيما أفناه So the first thing that you will be asked about is your life and how you spent it. They will not move, your feet will not move from their place until you're asked about four things. Umurihi fima afna. Your life, all of your life. Whether you be old, you be young. Whether you be male, you be female. Whether you're from a certain country or another, a certain sector of society or another, every single person will be asked about their time and how they'd spent it. 
umur, their life, and how they'd finished it. And you'll be asked about your knowledge. As it came in an athar, that the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنِ ازْدَادَ عِلْمًا وَلَمْ يَزْدَدْ هُدًا مَزْدَادَ مِنَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بُعْدًا Whoever increases, as in his knowledge is always at an influx, positively. His knowledge is always increasing. وَلَمْ يَزْدَدْ هُدًا And you see that his guidance from Allah as in his actions are not increasing, this person is always increasing further and further away from Allah Azza wa Jal. In distance. And nothing more. مَزْدَادَ مِنَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بُعْدًا So you'll be asked about that knowledge that you seek. Every Thursday, you come here. Anything that you learn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be asked about you. By the way, this is not a reason for you to say, I'm not going to go on Thursday because maybe I'll be asked about what I learned. Because you still have to learn your deen. At that moment, you'll be asked about even the, why you didn't learn your deen. If you start giving your excuses. وَعَنْ مَالِهِ And also from his wealth. مِنْ أَيْنَ اِكْتَسَبَهُ وَفِي مَا أَنْفَقُ And also, he'll be asked about his wealth. From where did he gain this wealth? Where did you get that house? Did you get it through riba? Usury, interest? Calling and waging war against Allah Azza wa Jal? Did you do that? Where did you get that car? Was it through also a riba loan? A loan that entails interest? Displeasing Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger? Was it through that? What kind of work did you work in? What kind of field did you work in? Did you have to lie, cheat, treacherize? Did you? All of these things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be asking about. And, so, and also for children. The exams and elders alike that you did in schools, did you cheat in them? Plagiarize? Because all of the wealth that you're gaining, all of the wealth that you're gaining through that degree that you have attained through haram means no dear brother, no dear sister, that all of that wealth is considered muharram along with that. Make tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal if such is your case. And realize that Allah's Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ayyuma lahmin nubita ala al-harami fadnaru awlabi. That any flesh that's nourished with haram, the hellfire will be more worthy of this. So if you eat, make sure you eat well. As in make sure you eat halal. And nothing more than that. Imam al-Nawwi rahmatullah alayhi used to be amongst the signs of Allah azza wa jal in terms of the wara' that he had, in terms of his piety. Imam al-Nawwi rahmatullah, though he was in Dimashq, he wouldn't eat the food of the people of Dimashq. Never. He'd only have food from Palestine. Though he was in Dimashq, far away, but he'd always have food come from his father and other people for him from Palestine. Why? Because he used to say that the wealth of the people of Dimashq is mixed with Muharram. And I don't wish for any Muharram to go into my body. Al-Juwayni rahmatullah alayhi, same thing. His father would never feed him anything that was even doubtful. Anything that was even doubtful. Don't feed your children that which is haram. You'll be asked about that. Alongside with yourself, you'll be asked also about the children and the wives that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you responsibility for. Imam al-Juwaini used to, his father was also al-Juwaini, he used to make sure that his child Abu al-Ma'ali would only eat that which is halal and nothing that had any doubt in it. To an extent that one day he saw his child being fed by someone else in food that he wasn't sure about. So he came and made him puke. 
So you could take that food out. And even then, as Imam al juwaini grew old, he was giving a lecture or something of that sort, and he forgot a hadith of the Prophet or something along this lines. He forgot a piece of knowledge. So when the people asked him, he said, this is from the reminiscence of that food that was left over in my body that my father wasn't sure of. Though he puked out the food, but a little bit was left over in his body still. Because ilm necessitates amal, and they both have to come together. So on the Day of Judgment, along with your time, you'll also be asked about your knowledge. وَعَنْ جِسْمِهِ فِي مَا And also in terms of your, your body, and how you made it grow, grow old, and what you did with it. And Imam al-Ghazali rahmatullah alayhi, he used to say, and it's a very beautiful saying of his, he used to say, your, some of you might be businessmen. So you may understand this better than others. He used to say, your time is like your capital. It's like your capital. أَوْقَاتُ عُمُّرِكَ رَأْسُ مَالِكَ your time is like your capital. And through that time of yours, do you make tijara? Do you make business with Allah Azza wa Jal when it comes to your deeds? Because if you don't have time, then you can't have actions. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he used to be very careful when it used to come to his time. And he would say that I have never been more remorseful of anything like the remorse that I have for one day that goes by and the sun of that day sets and the day, that day wasn't better than the day before. So your time is like your capital. Make sure, just as if you're starting a business, you only have a hundred thousand dirhams. You're gonna make sure that every single one is worthwhile. Though you might have another million, and you'll spend that in any act anyway, but just to make sure, just to make sure that you don't go into loss in your business, you'll make sure that that hundred thousand is being put to the right use. Similarly, your time to your brother, your time to your sister, is what? It's like that capital. And then Imam al-Ghazali rahmatullah alayhi, he continues and he says, that what is the benefit of wealth that increases? What's the benefit of wealth that's increasing while the time is in decreasing? If you're spending your whole life and everything you do, working four jobs, trying to, you know, not trying to make ends meet, but working four jobs so you can have the best of cars, the best of lives, make yourself a house that you're never going to use yourself anyways. If you're doing all of that, then what's the benefit of that? Imam al-Ghazali rahmatullah alayhi says, when what? When your time is slowly decreasing, because the real capital through which you make business with Allah azza wa jal, the real capital through which you make a transaction with Allah azza wa jal, is slowly finishing and decreasing. And then you say to yourself, that oh, just wait until the day I build my house. Wait until my children grow a little bit older. Wait until I'm done <coughs> buying this car. Wait and wait and wait. When you're younger, you say, wait until I get married. Wait until I do this. Procrastinating. Tasawwuf. Procrastinating is one of the biggest problems that has occurred in the ummah. And the shaitan tries to pick key people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed to procrastinate particularly in the deen of Allah azza wa jal. And that's why Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bik min jalad al-fajr wa ajz al-thiqah. O Allah azza wa jal, I seek refuge in you from 
the keen behavior of the evil individual, as in whenever a person has to do evil, right away he'll go do it. Person wants to buy liquor, the same day he'll get a license. And the ajz thiqa, and the procrastination, and the laziness of a person that's an upright individual. Because shaitan doesn't want you to do good. Shaitan is your enemy. He doesn't wish khair for you. Imam al-Ghazali also speaking about this subject, in Ihya Ulum al-Din he says, think about this, listen to this very carefully. After this, we're almost done. Listen up very carefully. Imam al-Ghazali says, the person who procrastinates, the example of the individual who procrastinates, it's like while he's young, strong, he can do the worship of Allah Azza wa He can wake up at night, pray, and still go for work. And it won't be difficult for him. His body can take it. He says the example of this particular individual that procrastinates and doesn't take himself out of the fold of ma'siyah of Allah Azza wa disobedience of Allah Azza wa is like the example of a very large tree. Which we have been obliged and created to uproot. But we delay further and further and further as we grow older, knowing the fact that the older we grow, the more and more difficult it will become for us to uproot this tree. As we grow older, 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 and weaker, weaker and weaker. You've grown old, you've lost all that time. You've grown weaker, it's become more and more difficult for you to upload, uproot that tree of Masir. So the more you tell yourself later, after, after the kids, after the wife, after the car, after the house, after this, after that, recognize brother, you're just being deceived by the shaitan because you will become grow, you'll grow older and your habits will become stronger and firmer. Your habits will become stronger and fir- firmer. A person that watches four hours of TV every single day, spending a large portion of his time, about 25% of the time that a person stays awake on his day. A person that spends that much time in TV as he's young, do you think he'll decrease as he grows older, if he has the time to do so? A person that sits around absent-mindedly, doing nothing, not for the dunya, not for the sake of Allah Azza wa you think he'll grow older to be a very active individual, and doing this for Allah, and that for Allah, and going to this lecture, and doing this... Uh, you know, program and this and that, he won't grow to do anything. He'll grow weaker, weaker, as his habits grow stronger, stronger, and stronger. And remember dear brother, and with this I'll leave you off, that life is extremely short. Life is extremely short. And you should be fearful of Allah Azza wa Jal, just as we all try to be fearful of Allah Azza wa Jal, that you live an entire life of 60 years and you've left behind wealth for yourself, for your children, and you haven't left behind anything for your akhirah, the real abode. The real abode. The Prophet ﷺ, he walked into Aisha's house one day and he said, what happened to that shat, the sheep that we slaughtered? Aisha said, nothing is left of it except the shoulder of Prophet of Allah He said, every single thing is left of it except that shoulder. Because everything was spent in the way of Allah except that shoulder. أَذَانُ الْمَرْءِ حِينَ الطِّفْلُ يَأْتِي وَتَأْخِيرُ الصَّلَاةِ إِلَى الْمَمَاتِ دَلِيلٌ أَنَّ مَحْيَاهُ يَسِيرُ كَمَا بَيْنَ الْأَذَانِ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ The Adhan that you and I, and this is the final point, and we'll open the floor for questions. So listen carefully. The adhan 
that every single one of us had done in our ears when we were children. When the child is born, that adhan. And the fact that the day he dies is when they pray upon him is an evidence showing you that the entire life goes by in a flash just as the time between Adhan and Salah every single day goes by. Just life is really short, dear brother. It seems long to you, but it's not that long. Make sure you spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way He's pleased with it. And with that being said, we'll stop. وَصَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ